first reading today is from Psalms 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. You will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. And from Isaiah, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. comes from 1 Corinthians. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable. And we will be changed, for this perishable body will put on imperishability, and this mortal body will put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the same that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in the victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Seems like a long time ago I met with Cindy and Janice in the office at church, and I just kept thinking about one Bible verse. And it wasn't from any of the three that we heard today, but what I kept thinking about was that one that you all know. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. And I kept thinking about that because that's exactly what you were talking about the whole time we were talking about your dad, about Earl. The patience, the kindness, the greatness, the way that he brought all three of you up along with your mother to be wonderful, wonderful people. It was no accident that he was a patient and kind man, not envious or rude, not anything but giving, but giving. 91 years old, a miracle that he has lived this long with in the past couple years, all of the health challenges that he had. Not only the eyesight issue, but then the issue that landed him in Theta Park and then down to Milwaukee and then the cancer. But Dana read, death is swallowed up in victory. And that is the joy of this you have to think about Earl, but it's kind of hard to think about him alone because he and Dolores were together all that time. The last picture I have of them sitting on the pew outside of the fellowship hall at St. John, they kind of looked a little weary. They kind of weren't their best selves at the moment, but here's Earl with a Wisconsin, yeah, with a Wisconsin polo shirt on. Here's Dolores, and they're leaning into one another. The last time they were at St. John together. Somehow, in some way, I knew it would be the last day. That's why a picture was in order. I think about Earl, I think about all he did. An only child. Here's Earl, the flexible one. 
Here's Earl the one who was patient, waiting in multiple waiting rooms and dressing rooms, waiting on the girls to make choices. And from what they told me is, Earl would just be sitting there waiting, and they would go in and try something and come back out. Dad, what do you think? Well, I really like that. Go back in, try something else. Come back out. Okay, what about this one? Oh, I really like that one. And, then, and this would go on and on and on. How he really liked it. How he really liked, how he waited on you. How he wanted nothing but the best for you and truly for everyone else who is here today. Wanting the best. Patient. Also heard that all three of you learned how to drive a stick car. And that not only did you learn how to do it, because he said you need to know, right? You need to know. Not only that, but he took you out on the hills of Appleton to teach you, <laughs> in the parking lot at church to teach you more. And not only was it enough that you knew how to do it, but he made you take your driver's test in it. That's patience. That's kindness. And that's love and confidence beyond all measure something to be said about that as a person that we celebrate today. Always a giving person. All the cookouts at the house, all the cookouts with Earl out there enjoying in his element. All of that, the giving man. All of that, that when Cindy was having her bridal shower, Earl decided that you needed a tool shower. Because what else, right? And don't you think you should market that? I think that would be a really great idea, to tell you the truth. There's something about that. Knowing that you would have a need and knowing that your day was here too. There's something about the love that comes. Earl loved to go up north. Go up north, relax and be. He loved to play the piano. Play the piano for Sunday school. Earl sang for over over his entire life, really, at the church and the choir in many groups. And the fact that most of the choir is here today. What a testimony. And also the other testimony that Tim and John were going down to Milwaukee to see Earl in the days since he was down there. It's a lot. But look at the devotion that people have with someone who makes such a difference, with someone who just exudes love, and maybe that's not the word you use for it, but devotion and care and a beauty that has no end. When he was at college, he had a dark room. He had multiple cameras. He used to develop his own pictures and all of this. Imagine that. Did you find a lot of pictures in the years since your mom, right? A lot of pictures, a lot of things, but he loved that. He was an army vet. Army vet over in England and in Texas, a radio operator. After the army, coming back, beginning a life that really had no end and still doesn't. Earl would do anything for anybody. Perhaps you are the recipient of that. He was concerned about everyone. He looked out for everyone. When I first came here, I was amazed by the devotion of both Earl and Dolores and the way they cared for Aaron. It's amazing, is it not? That they took all that time and all that effort and loved on her. Not only that, they raised Nathan. <laughs> Right in their own way, and Maya, all of that, isn't it a beautiful testimony? But I was amazed at their devotion, at their devotion clear in their mid-upper 80s that they continued to have. He always supported Dolores. He always supported her. And they were beautiful in their own way as a couple. And look at all those pictures over there. The two of them together. But then when you get down and you see the entire family gathered around together, the beauty of this man 
it really shines through. One part about that is that when deciding the tombstone for both Earl and Dolores, he said their wedding date had to be on there. It had to be on there because together they were and together they will be. But everyone looked up to him. And I imagine it's not just family in the front half of the room. I imagine all of us have looked up to him in some way or shape. But let's talk about the Wisconsin Badgers for a minute. I wore my Ohio State watch for a <laughs> I wore it because it's red. Do you know, and maybe it's too personal to say, but Earl's decked out in his Wisconsin Badger gear. All for eternity. He attended every homecoming game every year. The Wisconsin Badgers. He probably had, I don't know how many of those polo shirts he had, right? Probably it was hard to pick out one that was going to be the one for him to wear to glory. I wonder, did he do the jump around thing? Anybody know? Maybe, maybe next time, maybe next time that we see that on TV or we see it in person, you think of Earl. I imagine that's the dance he did when he saw Dolores. There's something about being devoted to something and even something more. He knew that you girls would all be badgers, something to be proud of in that own way. He would take things apart just so he could see how they'd go back together again. He was a tinkerer, always busy, always doing something. But I can't forget to mention EAA. You know, the week before EAA, every night on the news, that's all they talked about, right? EAA's coming in next week. EAA's coming next week. Oh, we're getting ready and all the campgrounds and all the hotels and oh, oh we need volunteers, all that. You know how it goes because it's such a big thing. And the whole time, every night when that would come on TV, I said, oh, but Earl loved EAA. Earl loved EAA. And even continued just up to not even any time ago going to EAA and helping others to learn to go there and to be a part. And I kept thinking that every night and then that Friday morning I get a text from Cindy that he's gone right on the edge of EAA. I'm like, oh, good, now he can attend. <laughs> now he can see. Now he can be a part. Now Earl is in a place where that will become precious to him. And not just that he went, but that he was such an organizer, a leader, somebody to be uh, really emulated. So many things that Earl did for others, for our community, for the church, for you. I think that is where all these readings come in today. I lift up my eyes, where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. Earl knew that. Earl lived that. Or what about, have you not seen, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. And then it goes on to say, but you will not grow weary or faint. But you're going to run. You're going to rise. You're going to soar again. Earl was like the one who was not going to give up. He wasn't going to give up. He was going to be that one who would run and not grow weary. There's something about that too. And then the victory. The victory that is now his. That all pain and suffering for Earl are now gone. That there's a better life. That there's another life. A life where he is reunited with those who loved him and those whom he loved. So we thank God for his life. We thank God for all of you who have been just so loved by him. I hope you'll remember today, too, those words that I've shared. 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not rude or arrogant. Love doesn't ask for its own way. Now three things abide. Faith, hope, and love. 
And the greatest of these is love. decision that we wouldn't ask people if they had anything they wanted to say. Is there anybody out there who has something you'd like to say? <laughs> Tell you what, we're going across the hallway after the military honors outside, and if you have some story or something you'd like to share, please do it. This is the eternal life part about what we do. As long as we keep telling the story, Earl lives on and lives on and lives on. You're gonna have, as soon as someone tells a story, guess what, you're gonna remember something else and then you're gonna tell it too. This is part of what it means to be a community, a community of people and faith. Let's join our hearts and minds. 
Oh God, you are our strength and our redeemer. You are the conqueror of death. You have been victorious, and we praise you this day. Today we give you, with faith in your great mercy, Earl. We thank you for the life that you gave to him and all the days of his earthly life. We thank you for all that he was to those who loved him. We thank you that for Earl, all sickness and sorrow are ended. We thank you for the journey, the journey of love and compassion, the journey of watching someone who tinkered and could figure things out, the journey of someone who sang, who played, who was patient, kind, devoted, loving. This day we especially pray for family and friends from near and far, those who have come to be together to celebrate his life. May his life be a wonderful memory for them. For the meal that will be shared, we give you thanks. We ask you to bless us in that as we not only share food, but share memories, perhaps laughter, perhaps tears. Keep us all in communion with your faithful people of every time and place, that at last we may rejoice together in the heavenly family where Jesus Christ reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer using whatever words are familiar to us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Earl. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, as sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a son of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the company of all the saints in light. And for all of you ready to continue on this life's journey, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And now we'll wait for instructions from Tim about the honor guard. On behalf of Earl's family, I'd like to thank Pastor Lynn Mark for being here with us today, and also all of you for coming out and showing your support. Uh, at this time, we're gonna be stepping outside for military honors which takes six, seven minutes, something like that. It is pretty warm up there, out there, so those of you that are not comfortable with the heat are welcome to go across the hallway. Uh, if your schedule permits, I know the family would like it very much if you're able to join them for a luncheon that will be served right after military honors, again, just across the hallway here. So thank you very much for coming. If there are about four gentlemen that wouldn't mind stepping this way and helping me, uh, if I could borrow your muscles, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> 